we are live. Yay. Am I live? Not yet. I, I don't see you. You don't see me yet? No. What? It shows that there I'm live. Goes. There I am. Way. I'm live. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Isabel de la Cruz. Woo, this is my first live ever. I'm super excited. And uh, I really hope that this is of benefit of you guys. Um, I have been tutoring. Uh, some of you know who I am. For those of you who don't know, uh, I have been tutoring. I'm a math and science tutor and Spanish tutor, actually. But this channel is not about that. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I've been tutoring for over 10 years. I started tutoring in 2008 uh, for a program called Oprah Bound, and, uh, which basically helped kids in high school to get more kids who weren't doing well in school to encourage them to go to college. And I was in college at the time, so they hired us uh, to, sorry, I didn't touch, mean to touch the microphone. Uh, they hired us to, 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 to show them what college life was all about and, and all that kind of stuff. And it was awesome. It was, it was actually a great experience. And that was my first like awakening of, oh my gosh, I gotta be a teacher of some kind, right? So um, I got a degree in molecular and cellular biology. I was a math major for three years before that. And uh, I went to the University of Puerto Rico in Umacao, Mama Bull. And uh, I was also, I graduated actually, I transferred to the University of Illinois at Urbana Champaign, which is a mouthful. Um, and I graduated with a degree in molecular and cellular biology. So after I graduated, I decided to become an actress, super random. And <laughs> then I, um, I started tutoring on the side and I fell in love with it. I loved it ever since uh, 2014, I've, I've been doing it as my quote unquote full-time job. And, and I love it, and I love my students. I decided to do this YouTube channel um, after COVID started because I've always wanted to provide tutoring to those who can't afford it because tutors are not cheap. And I just wanted to, to make sure that we all had an, you guys had an outlet, right? You know, like you guys had somebody to come to when you had like math and science questions. Um, and, and here I am. So basically what I'm going to do today is a little bit of, of chemistry, actually, is what we're going to be doing today. So if you have not taken chemistry, I recommend that you don't watch this because <laughs> you're going to be very lost. If you are taking chemistry right now, I have noticed with my students that the most, um, the thing that most students struggle with um, in, in this section is basically like the types of reactions, identifying different types of reactions and balancing equations. So that's what I'm going to be uh, talking about uh, today. I just also want to remind you guys that I'm going to be doing this every Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern time, which is 6 p.m. Central time and 4 p.m. Pacific time of the United States. So um, keep in mind, you can uh, always check, check out the uh, Google link, the Google Doc link that I have uh, below in the uh, video description. So you guys can sign up for whichever weekend you want. I will be answering your questions. So without further ado, let's get started. All right. So first of all, there are five different types of reaction, the main reactions. There are other reactions, but they're the main ones that you're going to be learning in class if you're like in ninth grade or, or so, you're, you're in chemistry class. You're going to be learning about synthesis reactions. All right. Can you see that? Oh, that's a little too high. So you're going to learn about synthesis reactions. You're going to be learning about decomposition reactions position and single replacement you almost be like with that handwriting how is she a teacher it's all right y'all it's not about that <laughs> double replacement reaction replacement some people call them displacement by the way it doesn't matter it's the same thing Tomato, tomato, and my favorite, combustion reactions. You still see that? Yeah. All right. So these reactions are basically, um, they're, they're, they just happen in life, right? Like it's nothing that we made up. We, we, our, our job as scientists is to identify what happens in nature, right? It's not, and to label it, to give it name and to give it, you know, to reason of what is happening, right? Um, uh, what's, what's behind it. Uh, in my opinion, how did God do that? Right. That's just my belief. Uh, but anyway, um, the synthesis reaction, basically you're just going to have two, uh, whether they're elements or molecules, you're just going to have two components to our reaction. So uh, component A and component B, 
and they are going to become something else. If you haven't um, realized it yet, the word synthesis is just a very fancy complex word to say to make. Right? That's all it means. Anytime you hear that in science, whether it's biology, chemistry, uh, even physics, I think, um, you, anytime you hear the word synthesis, it just mean, means to make something, right? So you're building something, some sort of, of building. So basically when you have two things and they become one, that's a synth synthesis reaction, right? The decomposition is the opposite of a synthesis, right? So it's just gonna be, if I go from C, right? I, it, that C would become A plus B, as simple as that, all right? Again, this is, obviously this is gonna be a molecule. This is gonna be an element. The element is not gonna break. Um, the, the molecule is gonna break or the compound and then it's gonna uh, divide into its components or some sort of components of it. And then we have the single replacement reaction, which um, I like to think of this, uh, a lot of my students get this very confused, the single replacement and double replacement reactions. And I like to think of it this way. This is like a telenovela. And those of you who don't know what a telenovela is, it's like a soap opera, all right? And it, it's basically, we have this couple, right? And I wanna make a disclaimer that I am not condoning any type of infidelity, but, <laughs> A single replacement, basically, you have this single person over here. All right? This is a couple. All right? And that person is attracted to one of the members of that couple, right? And you guys have seen it on a soap opera. It's like, oh, my gosh, I love you so much. And they're like, oh, but I'm a married person, right? And then they're like, but, but you're my true love, right? And then they swap, and they replace that person that they're with with that other person. That is a single replacement reaction, which is horrible. But in nature, it's okay. In chemistry, I should say, it's okay. <laughs> All right, so A plus B, C, it's gonna yield one of two things because it depends on which one this person is attracted to, right? So if person A is attracted to person B, B is gonna be the positive component of this, um, of this component, right? So A plus B, this A is gonna have to be negative if it's gonna be attracted to the positive sign. So it's gonna become B, A. But if this A happens to be positive, so I'm actually gonna call it D. So if D was positive and it's the same couple, right? So the positive is gonna be attracted to the C because the C is the negative component of that um, molecule or component. So this is gonna become D, C because we always, always, always write the positive uh, part of the component first and then the negative, all right? So if this was the positive, this would be the negative, so BBA. This is the positive, this is the negative, so it would be DC, all right? I hope that makes sense. Now, the double replacement reaction, it ain't no soap opera anymore. This is like Jerry Springer stuff, all right? So this is two couples, right? And you know, the couple <laughs> goes into Jerry Springer and they're like, oh, my wife is, is, is looking at the neighbor, but the neighbor is married. But then he ends up being with the wife of the neighbor, kind of like that. It's awful. But anyway, <laughs> I hope you guys make it makes sense to you guys. So if we have a couple here, right, and we have the second couple, right, and they are attracted to each other's partners, right, then this A is going to match with D, right, because A would be the positive and D would be the negative, right? And then B and C, when they combine together, is going to become C, B, all right? Because C would be the positive, B would be the negative. It would never be the other way around. You would never have like A and C or B and D. That is never going to happen in chemistry because the, only the opposites attract, right? And that's where that came from. <laughs> but anyway, the combustion reaction is actually going to be, um, we're always going to have either a carbohydrate or a hydrocarbon, okay? The difference is very, very similar. They're very, very similar. They have carbon and hydrogen in them, but uh, carbohydrates have also oxygen. Hydrocarbons don't, uh, but it doesn't matter. The point is that um, it's going to be a carbohydrate or a hydrocarbon if it has an oxygen here, all right? Could you guys still see that? Yes. Um, and that is going to um, combine with oxygen gas, all right? And that is going to yield carbon dioxide and water. Can you see that? Water. 
Yes, you can see that. All right, great. So it's going to uh, form carbon dioxide and water. And if you guys think about it, right, every time you have uh, burned something, right, one of the, the two ways of putting it out is either uh, to put out the fire would be to either put water on it, right, or which is a product of it. So then it won't happen or um, you cover it. Right. So if you if you suffocate the fire, the, um, the the fire goes out. So if there's no oxygen, the combustion cannot happen. The heat cannot the 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 burning of it cannot happen. All right. So I hope that makes sense. Um, oh, carbon dioxide and water are going to be the uh, the products of that carbon dioxide. If you guys uh, know, if you inhale smoke when um, when there's a fire. Right. That's basically what you're inhaling. You're being inhaling uh, uh, CO2, which is not good. So please don't start fires, even though they're fun. <laughs> All right, so now what we're gonna do, I hope you guys wrote that down. If you didn't, that's okay. This live is gonna be available for you later. And I'm gonna uh, uh, write down or co connect the link for you guys to see a, uh, a worksheet as well. So you guys can uh, practice a little more identifying reactions, but let's do a few exercises real quick. All right, so I keep hitting this microphone. I'm so sorry, y'all. <laughs> All right, let's do the first um, exercise. And then what we're going to do is we're going to be balancing those reactions, by the way. But we'll get to that in a minute. All right, so let's do the first exercise. Is that? Yep. All right. So number one, let's suppose that we have C8H16 plus... O2. I'm going to write those dashes here because this is how we're going to balance it later. We'll see that in a minute. And um, this is going to yield CO2 and water. Can you guys see that? Ah, almost there. All right. It's going to yield uh, CO2 and water. So what reaction you guys think that is? Well, we see a carbohydrate right here, actually a hydrocarbon. We see a hydrocarbon here, we see oxygen, and then we know that the product is gonna be CO2 and water, right? Obviously, I'm gonna start with my favorite reaction, which is combustion. So this is gonna be a combustion reaction. Can you guys see this? Yeah, so this is gonna be combustion. All right. Now, the second reaction that we're gonna do here is NABR, or excuse me, it's not NABR, is um, sodium bromide. I had a chemistry teacher actually yell at me one time because it's like, your name is not I-S-A-B-E-L, right? It's Isabel. So I, you better call it with the proper name. I was like, dude, calm down, okay? It's, it's not that serious. They are not gonna get offended. So, <laughs> but some scientists get offended. So please call it by their proper name. All right, so um, NABR, the sodium bromide, is going to be combined with um, calcium hydroxide. All right, and that is going to yield, whoops, calcium bromide and um, NaOH or sodium hydroxide. Ah, I'm running out of space over here, y'all. Do I have room to, yeah, I can just write it a little farther back here. Sorry, y'all. Let me write that back here, a little farther back. Let's do this like here. All right, number two, here we go. So this is gonna be, I wish I could fast forward. Like, <laughs> Right, like I do all my videos, but this is live. Yay, welcome to the live. <laughs> all right, and CABR2 plus um, NaOH. There we go. All right, so what kind of reaction would that be? Well, we see two couples, right? We see two molecules here, or um, technically a ionic compound animal. Um, no, they're both ionic compounds, actually. So we have two ionic compounds here. So we have sodium bromide and we have calcium hydroxide, and which means that there are two components to each, right? And we see that these two components are actually swapped. We see how sodium went to hydroxide right here, 
right? And then we see how bromine uh, connected with uh, calcium, right? So we have calcium bromide here. That is going to be a double replacement reaction. All right, so this is gonna be, we call it DR for short. You guys can still see that? Awesome. All right, let's do the third one. The third one is going to be PB, which is lead and uh, plus three hydrogen phosphate. This is going to yield H2 plus PB3 PO4. Two. That's a two, you all. Sorry if you guys can see that very well, but that's a little two right there. All right. Well, what kind of uh, reaction is that going to be? Well, we see that we have a single element right here, and then we have a molecule right here, right? Technically, another ionic compound. Yes, ionic compound. Uh, phosphate is an ion. So right here, we're going to see how this lead, right, is going to combine with the phosphate. Right, and then this hydrogen is gonna end up single and sad and upset at phosphate for leaving him, right? <laughs> so dramatic. So what we have here then is a single replacement reaction, or SR for short, all right? So number four, we have calcium carbonate is going to yield, whoops, CaO plus CO2. All right, now don't get fooled because this, is, this ends up with CO2. That doesn't mean it's a combustion reaction. It has to meet all the requirements, right? It has to have a carbohydrate or a hydrocarbon. It has to have oxygen and it has to yield carbon dioxide and water, all right? This only yields carbon dioxide, which means that we're not gonna have to worry about that. We know it's not combustion, but we see that we have one compound at first that broke into two. Now, again, these two don't have to be single elements. They can still be compounds, right? But the point is that this one thing became two, all right? So that means that this is going to be a decomposition reaction because it decomposed into its elements or, or some sorts of elements, all right? So this is decomp decomposition. And the last one, well, if you guys have been paying attention, you know what the last one is. <laughs> but uh, O2, this is going to yield P2O3. All right, now this is the complete opposite of this one, right? We have two, uh, in this case, actually elements, right? Two elements that are going to become one compound or one molecule, right? So in this case, it is actually going to be a synthesis. Again, they don't have to be, like if this equation was, was backwards, if this um, uh, chemical reaction was backwards and the CA, uh, CAO and the CO2 were combined to form this, then they would still be a synthesis, right? It doesn't have to be just an element, it's just a, a, a parts of the whole, basically, right? So this is going to be a synthesis reaction. All right, I hope that made sense so far. Now, the part that is the most confusing for most of my students is how to balance them, all right? The reason why I wrote these dashes in front of all of them is because that is the only place, I'm gonna repeat that, the only place you're going to be uh, placing any numbers, okay? You always put them in front of them when you're balancing the equations because you are not going, if you were to change like this eight or this 16 or anything like that, or if you put it in parentheses or whatever, whatever you decide to do, right? What you're going to be doing is you're going to be changing the entire composition of the actual molecule or element. All right. You can't do that. We are, we're not, we're not going to change the equation, right? We're not going to change um, what this is. What we're going to figure it out is how nature does it. Because we know that the first law of matter is that you cannot create nor destroy matter. You, it can only be transformed, right? Matter cannot be um, created nor destroyed. It can only be transformed. So that means that if I started with eight carbons over here, 
I have to end up with eight carbons over here. They can't just disappear, right? They're not, they're not just gonna like poof in the air, right? And vice versa, right? Like if I started with, um, I don't know which one it is. Like if I started with one lead over here, I'm not gonna end up with three leads. Right. That doesn't make any sense. I can't I can't just make lead out of nothing. I have to have started with three leads. OK, and we're going to get to that. So what I'm going to do, what I like to do when I'm uh, balancing equations is that the first thing I do is I list what elements I have in my reaction. OK, and hopefully if you wrote them correctly, <laughs> you're going to have the exact same elements on one side and the exact same elements on the other side. Again, you can't just come up with stuff. If you turned out, like for example here, if you wrote like phosphorus here and then you end up with lead, right? If you forgot the B by accident or something like that, then you gotta check your notes. You gotta make sure that you wrote this correctly because if you started with, uh, if you end up with lead, you better have started with lead. All right, there's gotta be lead here somewhere. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write down which I, who I have here on the left-hand side. So I have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. That's the first thing I'm going to do. And then I'm going to write in the exact same order. I'm going to write it on the other side. Okay. Sometimes I like to do this. It's okay if you want to do that. If not, that's completely fine. You always do what works best for you. That's my motto. You always do what works best for you. So um, you put carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. I do not put them in the order that they're here. I always put them in the order that I wrote them here. And the reason is because I, now I'm going to be comparing them with each other. And if I have carbon here, but then I have it down here or whatever, it's, it's just going to make a mess. All right. It's going to get very confusing. So I'm going to find out how many carbons do I have on each side, how many hydrogens, how many oxygens. On this side, I have eight carbons right here, right? So C8. That eight only belongs to the C. It does not belong to the H and let alone does not belong to the O at all. So I have eight carbons here. I have 16 hydrogens here. All right. I have two oxygens here. And on this side, I'm going to count the same thing. So I have one carbon here. I have two oxygen, uh, hydrogens, sorry, here. And I have three oxygens here because I have two oxygens here and I have one oxygen here. So I have three. All right. So where do I start? Well, that is up to you. But I want to tell you where should you end. All right. This is also very important. You should end with the lone one. All right, leave oxygen for last. Don't mess with oxygen because since this element is by itself, it's so much easier to manipulate. All right, so I'm just gonna leave oxygen for last. I'm gonna deal with carbon first. All right, uh, you could deal with hydrogen first if you want to. It's up to you. I'm gonna start with uh, carbon. So since I have eight carbons on this side, I need to have eight carbons on the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna place an eight here. And now I no longer have one carbon on that side. Now I have eight. Right, so that checks out. But when I wrote that I have eight carbon dioxides, right? It's not just eight carbons; it's eight carbon dioxides. That means that I no longer have um, uh, two oxygens here. Now I have sixteen oxygens here, right? Because eight times two is sixteen. So I have sixteen oxygen plus this last oxygen. So I'm going to have seventeen oxygens total. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to deal with hydrogen because, I again, I'm going to leave oxygen for last because I can do with this whatever I want. So I'm going to deal with hydrogen. So how many hydrogens do I need? I need 16, but I have two only, right? And since this comes in pairs, how many uh, molecules of water do I need? I need eight molecules of water because eight times two is 16. So that leaves me with that. Now the hydrogen matches. And then... Um, now that is also going to add on uh, eight elements of uh, or eight atoms of oxygen, right? So now I no longer have 17. I have eight times two, which is 16 plus eight. Okay. That is 24. Is that right? That's 24. <laughs> Just double checking my math. I'm human too. Just because I teach it doesn't mean that I'm a, uh, you know, I'm not a, uh, guru or something. <laughs> I'm not a goddess. Um, all right. So since I have 24 now, now I got to balance this guy. All right. So now I can do with uh, deal with oxygen. It has two only. So how many do I need? I need 12 oxygens. All right. 12 molecules of oxygen. If I multiply them, then I get 24. And bam, that is that. You have eight carbons total, 
16 hydrogens total, 24 oxygens total, you're done. It will always match, by the way. It should always match. If it doesn't, like if you're at it for like 30 minutes and it doesn't work out, check your notes. You might have written a, a two instead of a three or something like that. So, but it should always, always, always match. Again, matter cannot be created or destroyed, right? It can only be transformed. So it will happen. If you guys follow the steps, you're gonna get it every time. All right, let's do the double replacement. So I'm gonna do what I did first. I'm gonna label everything I have here. I have sodium, I have bromine, I have um, calcium. Now, I'm, this is not gonna fit here, so I'm just gonna do calcium here. And I'm not gonna do oxygen and hydrogen. I'm gonna do hydroxide. And why am I gonna do hydroxide? And I highly, highly recommend that you memorize your um, polyatomic ions because if I start with hydroxide here and I end up with hydroxides over there, there is no need for me to count oxygens and hydrogens, just count the hydroxides, right? So, and I'm gonna do the same thing here. So I'm gonna do sodium, bromine, calcium, and hydroxide. All right, so how many sodiums do I have here? I only have one. How many bromines? I only have one. Calcium, I only have one. That two belongs to a hydroxide. All right, that's why the OH is in parentheses because it only belongs to the hydroxide. So we have two of those. Now, how many sodiums do I have here? I only have one. Bromine, I have two. Calcium, I have one. And hydroxide, I have one. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just because in this case, not like the first one that we could just, um, you know, just say, oh, like, oh, this is the uh, lone element, so to speak. So I'm going to leave that one for last. This one, everybody has a couple. So I'm just going to choose whichever is easiest. So I'm just going to start with hydroxide. So hydroxide has one here and two here. I'm just going to start with what's different, I guess is what I should say. So um, I'm going to place a two here. This is going to leave me with two hydroxides. And now I also have two sodiums, right? So now I'm gonna have to deal with that on this side. Now I have, I'm gonna put two sodiums here, right? But that's also gonna fix my bromine. It's gonna give me two bromines here, all right? Now the bromines match actually. Oh, everybody matches, ta-da! So now we have two sodium, two sodium, two bromine, two bromine, one calcium, one calcium, one, uh, uh, two hydroxide, two hydroxide. By the way, I didn't mention this previously, Normally, especially on a test, I would put the one here. You don't have to. By convention, we normally don't do it. Um, but I would probably um, put the one there just so for you, A, so that you can, you know, you know when you're done with the problem. And also so that you can show your teacher like, hey, I know that this is supposed to just be one and not that I left it blank, if that makes sense. Um, so I'll just rather just write once in that way. I, for me, it works to just see that I'm like, okay, I'm done. All right, cool. So let's do the next one. So we have lead, we have um, hydrogen, and we have phosphate, right? So phosphate does not break, right? I don't have phosphorus here and I don't have oxygens by themselves, which means that this phosphate doesn't break, right? So I'm just gonna write phosphate as one of my, um, my components here that I'm gonna be counting, okay? So I'm gonna have lead, I'm gonna have, that's a terrible B. I'm gonna have lead, I'm gonna have hydrogen, and I'm gonna have um, PO4, phosphate, not PO4. All right, um, sorry about the mic, guys. I'm gonna do something about that mic. All right, so let's get this party started. How many lead do I have on this side? I just have one. I have three hydrogens here. I have one phosphate here, uh, three leads here, two hydrogen here, and two phosphate there. Sorry, that little two, you can barely see it, but there's a two over there. All right. So um, what do I do here? Again, you have the H2 that is by itself. Leave that for last. Leave hydrogen for last. All right. So let's start with something else. Well, we know that we have, uh, or, or you can leave lead. Actually, I will leave lead, lead for last because lead, actually you only have one. This one you can, you, you kind of need an even number. You don't have to, you can always multiply, but I would actually leave lead for last, for the very, very last. All right, so let's start with, who do we start with? I'm gonna start with 
phosphate. Why not? I'm going to start with phosphate. And phosphate, I'm going to do two here. All right. So I have two phosphate now, which matches with this phosphate. And now I have six hydrogen. So I'm going to have to fix that. And because now I have six hydrogen, right? I'm going to have to have six hydrogen here. So in order for me to do that, I have to put a three there. So now that is six. All right. And the only thing I have to fix here is that I have lead that I need three of them. So I put three right there. And this doesn't need to be changed at all. So bam, that's it. So now you have three leads on each side. You have six hydrogens on both sides and uh, phosphate, uh, two phosphates on each side. So that is that. Ta -da. Um, fourth one, we're almost there, y'all. So we do calcium. And now in this case, even, even though carbonate is a polyatomic ion, and like I said, you should memorize those. If you look on this side, I don't see carbonate anywhere, right? Carbonate is not on this side. So I, in this case, I have to write carbon and oxygen. All right. So I have to do carbon and I have to do oxygen. All right. And same thing I'm going to do here. So I'm going to do calcium. I'm going to do carbon and I'm going to do oxygen. Uh, not, not O2. Sorry. I'm so used to writing oxygen as O2. Sorry. Uh, oxygen. Now, so how many calciums? One carbon, one O3. All right. It's three oxygens, one carbon. All right. That three only belongs to the oxygen. Uh, one calcium, uh, one carbon, three. Uh, I meant to write one, y'all. <laughs> one carbon and uh, three oxygens. And actually, that is balanced. Ta-da! That is awesome. So I have one, one, and one. You don't have to do anything because you have the same amount of everything on both sides. So, yay. All right, last one. So we have phosphorus and we have oxygen. This is going to be pretty easy. All right, we have phosphorus and we have oxygen. All right, so we have four um, phosphorus over here two oxygens, we have two phosphorus and three oxygens here. How do I make that happen? Well, I would fix on this side first, right? So let's start with this. So I'm gonna do two here so that I can have four on this side, but that is gonna change my um, oxygens too, right? So I'm gonna have six now, all right? So uh, now this is four, so I don't need to change that at all. And the oxygen, I need to have six. So I'm just gonna have three. I'm gonna have three oxygen gas, right? Or oxygen molecules, all right? And that is going to give me six um, atoms of oxygen. And that is it, y'all. Um, thank you so much for those of you who uh, watched. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Even if this is a replay, that is completely cool. I know that this time doesn't always work for everybody. But uh, thank you so much. I hope to see you all next Saturday. This is pretty much what, what I'm going to be doing for you. But in, instead, you're going to have you're going to be able to be here and actually like with me, not physically here, but on the computer with me and ask me questions like, hey, why do you do this? Why do you do that? Uh, that didn't make sense. Can you repeat that? Anything like that? Anything that you didn't understand today? Um, I can always go over with you personally so that I can actually answer all of your questions. So thanks again. I hope to see you guys next weekend. Take care.